What's going on guys? Back in the Gear and Gadgets garage tonight and we have quite a few projects we're going to be tackling. First off is going to be some new shocks in the Jeep. This is going to improve my ride quality, give me better flex and more down travel. I've also got a fun little upgrade for all of you TJ guys. I've got an interior upgrade as well in the Jeep. Then I've got a fun little something something for the Corvette and a quick addition to the Charger. Got quite a few things I'm going to be doing in this video so let's go ahead and get the Corvette pulled out of the garage and the Jeep pulled in so we can start on project number one. Listen to that cam. Sounds so good. I am really glad we got the Corvette, but it makes it interesting when doing the driveway shuffle. We had to move four cars just to get the LJ in here. Now, a lot of you guys have also been asking about the wiring on the LS swap. The Holly Terminator kit is on back order. I've been waiting for a while, but when it comes in, we will be wiring it up. And I refuse, and I mean, I really don't want to get everything wired up to take it apart and then put the Holly Terminator kit in. So just waiting on that one. That'd be way too much wiring. It'd be way too much wiring. I'm not, I don't, I can't do that. No, no, no. You guys all commented him or they complimented, compl they complimented my new cool sunglasses. On his pit vipers, okay? So I decided to go one step cooler. You ready? Wow! The Terminator glasses. The Terminator glasses. Now you look like, a, is it Mikey or Sully <laughs> from Freaking Monster Zinc? The one know. eye? We picked these up. <laughs> Oh man, back to these. Back to the pit vibes. To, let's see what Cassie looks like. Oh my gosh, you look worse. It could just start be a trend, right? No. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to shocks. I have a bit of a funky setup in the front. After the JK axle swap last year, I needed some new shocks and I found these on Facebook Marketplace. They're the Fox shocks with the remote reservoir, but these are designed for a JK. Now, I love Fox shocks, I love how they ride, but these are a bit stiff because they are designed for a heavier vehicle, which was kind of fine because I needed shocks to move from Virginia down to Texas, but it is now time to change those out. They, they, they did ride pretty nice, like on the highway. Yeah, on the but, highway was really but nice. But now it's like every, every bump, it's like <laughs> the whole Jeep just, <laughs> just moves with it. Now in the rear, I'm also running the Fox shocks, but these are the ones that are designed for a TJ. Again, love Fox shocks, love how they ride, but those are just a bit too short, so it's time for some new ones. Last time we took the Jeep out to test the 37s, I'll throw some clips in here. We really noticed that pretty much all the shocks are limiting my flex and travel both the front and the rear. So we we're gonna get these replaced, see if we can get a little more out of our shocks. Let's check out the new ones. I went with a budget-friendly setup and that's because I know in a year or so I'm gonna wanna put some coilovers on this thing. Hey Ben. So for the fronts, I went with the Bilstein 5100s. Then in the rear, I went with the cheaper setup and I went with the Skyjacker. These are gonna give me the travel I wanted, which is kind of why I went with these. So let's just go ahead and get these old shocks off, get the new ones on, compare them. And drink some beer. And drink some beer. <laughs> Guess I'll drink a beer. <laughs> Looking at these shocks side by side, mount to mount, the Bilstein is a little longer. It's about an inch and a half longer, which means I'll have a bit more down travel. Also, it's going to improve my ride quality going from a JK shock to a actual TJ shock, which is I'm really looking forward to that. However, it, it is kind of funky. Like I think the Fox shocks, I think they ride better if it was a TJ one, but they also, I think they look better because the way the Fox shocks mount, this side is up, but the Bilsteins are, they do it the other way. This yeah, so you're, you're gonna look at the Jeep and just see- Just see like- The shaft. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, it's not about looks, it's about function. So let's get these Bilsteins installed. I wish I could lead press this instead. Ah, Stan, I need your muscle. Got the old shock out. The new one is three inches longer, which is gonna be great. I also wanted to point out, I'm running the bar pin eliminator. This is like a weak point on the shock. So I'm going to push out this bushing on the box one and put it on the new one. Should really bolt this somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well it's nice with it being portable. Got it. All right, now I gotta get this thing out. <laughs> <laughs> the socket that you pressed in. <laughs> Finished installing the shocks last night and posted my old ones up for sale and somebody is already on their way to pick them up. So Ben is out there washing off the old Fox shocks. And I think Ronnie, who has a JK, is on his way to come get them now. Hey, Say hi, you're on camera. <laughs> yeah, I'm, Good, how are you? Really stuff. Yeah, mine have had them for a while and yeah. I know it's coming. Let's see, what do you really know? Actually, old man emu. Normally we're just spending money in videos, but- This time we made money. Yeah, we sold the shocks to Ronnie. And then we sold some old headlights to another guy. Yeah, we're in the right direction. We need to do this more often. More often, start, yeah, stop just buying Just start selling stuff. everything instead. Yeah, I like it. Who wants to buy 
What do you got? A nice win circle shop chair. Oh, adjustable up and down. 20 bucks. 20, no, it's mine. <laughs> a big reason I needed to upgrade my shocks is because the next big project on this Jeep is going to be a long arm kit. Yes, going with three link in the front and a four link in the rear. The kit actually just came in yesterday. Going with the DIY long arm kit from Barnes four wheel drive. I'm really excited that we finally have this because we've been wanting to do long arms for a while. Well, the Jeep has everything, like has everything else done to it. You got 37s, lift kit, you got a freaking V8 in there. It's What's, time for long arms. Next, like know? I needed to get new shocks in order to really benefit from the traveling installing long arms. Yep. Yeah. So that will be coming soon. Now, before I move on to some other Jeep projects, I need to get the cash can installed in the charger before the sun goes down. Now I'm going with a cash can kit. There are DIY options out there, but I mainly I went with this one because it is color matched to the charger. That that's really why it got me. Now cash cans, you know, they're hit or miss. Some people like them. Some people don't. I'm, I'm going to put one in. I'm a fan of them. Uh, basically because it's going to catch that the oil and like air mixture that comes back through, through your PCV system and catch in the catch can before it goes back into your intake. Because the other day we emptied Ben's catch can that he has on the Gladiator and it was completely full. Like it was, it was just disgusting. So I'm definitely gonna put a catch can in. Let's go ahead and get that project done so I can close the garage and get the AC going in here. And just like that, the catch can is on. It's time to get back in the garage because it doesn't look like it, but it's so hot outside right now. It is extremely right hot. <laughs> the catch can looks good though. It does look good. I'm glad I went with the color match. The one. color match, man. Schnazzy. Man, look at that. Look, look at that, look, look at, at that, that engine bay. <laughs> Fancy. Back to the Jeep. Now, three more things I need to do. One's for a JK, one's for a TJ, and one's more universal. So starting with the JK, this is a knuckle pod light mount from Molly Platform Solutions. Basically what this does is it mounts to your knuckle and it allows you to mount a pod light under here. And what that means is wherever, whichever way your tires go is whichever way your pod light that you mount here, it's going to like push the light out. So because like, look at this. So you have your, your light up here. It's obviously going more straight unless it's like a floodlight, but my tires are turned this way, which means if there was a light under here, it would be going in that direction, which is So you can cool. kind of point where the light's going. You can shoot, yeah. It's like a flashlight. It's, it's like a flashlight, but it's like a headlamp. <laughs> it is like a head nap. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I got, obviously it's a set, one for each side. So basically all you're gonna do is take out your unit bearing bolts, put them back in, and then if you actually have your JK axles underneath the JK, uh, this is hole right here is for your uh, your wheel speed sensor. But I'm kind of jealous. I don't have to worry about I'm that. I'm not gonna lie. I would like a set of these on my Jeep, but I have the, my JK doesn't have. Yeah, we have a JK with one tons and yeah. a TJ with JK axles. We don't it's, have so a we, JK we to run JK, these on. <laughs> but. So let's get these things installed. I'm not gonna wire up any pod lights yet, but when you do, nobody's gonna believe that we know how to wire anything. Oh yeah, we just keep skipping the wiring. Just wiring, it's like, uh, hey, we'll wire it later. We're just gonna uh, wire it right along the brake line, keep it out of the way. So let's get these guys in. It's a good idea to jack your Jeep up when you do this. Otherwise, you're gonna be putting all that pressure on just one unit bearing bolt. They are installed. Now, a couple things I noticed is that one, that big hole was not for the wheel speed sensor. It was for the caliper bolt. So correction on that. Secondly, if you have aftermarket ball joints, you can't grease your ball joints with these, these things on. So I'm gonna drill a hole in these mounts so that I can still grease my ball joints. Thirdly, if you're going to run a pod light down here, you need to run a smaller one. Also, this is low hanging, so you don't wanna put anything too expensive down here. So this was just kind of an example one I had. It's a little large, and if you can imagine, air down pretty low, like what, like five PSI, like yeah. just super low. Cause like there is clearance now. And it, and this does have some, like it, it moves, it has it. flex to it. So it's not too worried, but I'm not gonna run anything expensive. Gonna be running some Amazon pod lights down here. Um, but other than that, I can't wait to take this like night wheeling and actually see See how cool it is to like See if it actually turn. works. I mean, cause like lo looking at it is like, dude, that's definitely some JK stuff. JK stuff. That is a JK <laughs> mod for sure. You would know, right? But if it works, it works. If it works, it works. Pretty you know, cool. I mean, like right now you're turned. I Those think... pod lights would be pointing here. Those would be pointing. Logically, it seems like it would Logically, work, Logically, right? you think it would work. All right. Now and you... I still want some, you know what I'm saying? The king of JK Poor stuff. JK, JK guys. <laughs> All right, you TJ guys, this is for you. If you suffer from like seat wobble syndrome, okay? You should know this noise if you have a TJ or an LJ. Um, so thank you. It's okay. Stable seat. Thank you for making like products that like no Jeep longer no longer exist. makes because Jeep does not make these anymore. Basically, these are new bushings 
to put down here on your seat so that your seat does not make this noise anymore because it is so frustrating, whether you're, whether you're like off-roading or driving this on the daily. Um, basically, all you're going to do is remove your Torx bit, I mean Torx bolt, remove it, replace the bushing behind it and also the bushing on top because over time, these just they just completely wear out and that's what causes all of that shaking noise. So I've got some new ones right here. Now the game plan was to actually put these in tonight. But Ben and I got invited to something with other people. And we were going to do the Corvette. And I was going to put in the, uh, the radiator support for the Corvette. I was, I was excited about that because I want to I wanna drive it. I wasn't because it's like a four hour job. It is. You have, I think you have, to jump, you have to drop the bumper. It's a four hour job and all y'all said you want a baseline quarter mile on a stock Corvette. <laughs> Everybody wants to see the Corvette. I mean, I want to do it. But anyway, so we got invited to go. Actually, what was it? Beer pong? Yes. Okay, I haven't played beer pong in years, okay? It's been I, a very long Right time. here, it's proof. Beer pong at the house? And I said, what house? Like, their house, our house? Like, we got We got invited for this, so. by real human beings so to go, go do something. Go hang out with some people tonight instead. Get those bushing replaced. Probably record it a little bit, and then we're gonna move on to the Corvette bracket. I and it's been a while since I played any kind of drinking game. We played this game where you like, Throw the you get the bounce the ball into the cup before the guy in front of you. It was not beer pong. No, it was and a then more fun, though. it was, and then but if the person behind you got it before you, they could stack you. Yeah, you had and to then bounce, you had to you had like to bounce drink. the pong ball into a cup before the person behind you bounced theirs into the cup. And if they stack you, you got a drink that just keeps going around in a circle. And then if you make it first, as you get more cups come around, it's like you can move it anywhere. Not it. I don't know. It got really complicated. We were too old for that. <laughs> too old for, I don't even know what it's called. Bounce, like, bounce, bounce, cup. bounce cup is what I'm going to call it. Uh, but I went ahead and got the passenger side bushings installed. And as you guys can see, when I shake it, that play is gone. It's not bouncing around anymore. So the install, pretty simple. Uh, it comes with instructions in the kit. When we go over there and grab it, all you need is a Torx bit and that's pretty much it. Here's the hard part though. I could use this Torx bit on the outside, but on the inside, this would not fit between the seat and the center console. So I had to use this Torx bit with a, an adjustable wrench. So let's go ahead and knock out the driver's side. Look at how worn this bushing is. I would say it is done. I think it's toast. <laughs> toast. For this upper one, you're just gonna pry it or just break it off completely. The new bushings are pretty simple. The inner one has a slit, so it just wraps around it. And then this part just goes right over the outside. And then for the bottom one, just goes right around the bolt. Then tighten her back up. The inside one is definitely a little more difficult. It's just harder to get to, and it's hard to record. Ooh, can you see anything? <laughs> I almost got this, uh, the top bushing off. All right, well, I got half of it off. <laughs> Got the new bushings in on the driver's side. Now when I move the seat, it no longer like moves side to side. I was almost at the point of getting new seats because like driving around and going down the road, I mean, it, it was happening to you too, right? Like it, this, was, it was bad. It was, it was like wiggling. Yeah. So it was like what, 30, 40 bucks. Got them from Staple Seat. You should definitely, definitely get them if you guys have a TJ and you have the same problem. Or because... you can buy these old ones for a low price of $5.99 <laughs> shipped. Nobody your... wants those. Are you serious? <laughs> It's probably so mad. Oh my god. So, I'm not cleaning them up. <laughs> so got that done. Now the next, the next thing, it's not really a uh, Jeep specific uh, mod upgrade, even like attachment. I don't even know what you want to call this, but it is a quick draw. Most of you guys probably know what I'm talking about. Um, it is magnetic and it screws into your dash. Now, because we're screwing into plastic, I probably can use bolts with a nut on the other side just so that it doesn't rattle or, you know, it doesn't fall off. So I kind of have an example here. Um, I've got a, uh, a clock 1900, because YouTube isn't very like keen on this kind of content. It's magnetic, so basically you put it in, it attaches, well that was really bad. There we go. Put it down and then it can go anywhere you want, so. I'm just blocking it. No, oh, I was like, what? Um, <laughs> so they made like stop. I, I don't know where to put it though. Is anyone, anyone out there running this? So I was gonna put it on my driver's side, but I'm afraid my knee might get in the way. I don't hop know. In, hop in, hop in, see if like, test it out. And then, yeah, so I was gonna do a driver's side. I'm afraid like my knee, I guess not. I, your knee might get in the way, but I'm so short. This yeah. might actually be okay for me. Um, and then I was thinking about doing it on the left side, but then that's my, not my dominant hand. Um, and then I was thinking about doing it on the, the passenger side, but then if you have a passenger over there, I don't know, it gets kind of confusing. So what, what do you guys recommend if you are running something like this, driver side, passenger side? Let me know in the comments below. I like the, I like the passenger side too. The pa well, I guess with half door, I was going to say it's a little more concealed. Like you wouldn't be able to see it, but the half doors kind of throw everything off. Yeah. 
But if you had That's normal true. doors, like if I walked up here, I wouldn't be able to see it. You wouldn't be able to see it even but if like it was over the there. Road, you it's might just kind of like. I just have to test it out. Like me hold it up here and I and like you come up to the window. Yeah, maybe so. But yeah, cool. So I'm kind of excited for this one. Always got to have a, a clock with you. You never know. <laughs> you not know what time it is. So if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. But right now it's time to get the Jeep out of here and move the Corvette in because we have got to put a new radiator support in that thing because both sides are broken and the radiator's just kind of hanging on by the hoses. <laughs> Roll your window down. <laughs> the ramps are moving. Of course. They're just sliding. Oh, you can't hold the brakes. You can't hold the brakes. Alright, there you go. Brake. Keep doing that. A little more. Keep going. We need better ramps. All that for like, what's that, three inches maybe? Four? Yeah. <laughs> they look better not under the car. I thought yeah. it was gonna be a little more than that. Amazon tricked us. There's a lot more damage than we originally thought. So got the Corvette jacked up. I got Ben holding the flashlight down here so you guys can see. So a couple, I don't, I don't even know where to start. You might have to show them like, the flashlight, like, I don't know. So over here we've got, here's the radiator support right here. First off, there's <laughs> supposed to be a bracket right here and it literally fell off. When yeah, we were... jacked up and touching it, it just fell, <laughs> it just, it fell on the floor. I don't know how well he was even sitting in there. <laughs> um, secondly, the radiator's not even like sitting in the support. So you've got, I'm like it's putting out, the light. Like here? Yep, right there. And it's supposed to be in that it's hole. It's supposed to be sitting over there. So it's just. It is just hanging. Free, I would say dangling, hanging. but it's not like dang. It's because it's so heavy. But I think the, the radiator hoses are holding it in. <laughs> That's this and then is we're ridiculous. Missing, we're missing all of the. Uh, there's like that the rubber plastic air dam that runs across here. That's gone. Gone. The I mean, bumper. check out like the damage. Well, that is too much light. Check out the damage just from like the freaking roads and speed bumps. Just scraping on, that. Yeah, on the support and then just all over. I mean, I mean, all over the bumper. That I mean, plastic. The. Uh, that's supposed to be a brake duck. Ain't nothing the brake there. Brake cooling duct, that's gone. <laughs> oh man. This yep. is hilarious. I can't believe. I mean, it's not. So the, the radiator support's not even on that side either, which is like the crazy yep. part. This side's broke too. It's completely done. So yeah. we're gonna have to fix all that up. Lots to do under here. Obviously, the Corvette needs a little bit of work. I'm gonna get going on installing that radiator support and also just cleaning up the whole like bottom of the front end in general. I also need to get going on installing the long arms in the LJ. And I need to start ordering some parts because coming up soon, it's going to be tearing down the top end of this engine and replacing the lifters. That is it for this video, guys. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys next time.